Hello and welcome back. My name is Ek, and in this video, we will be learning about some validations we can do on path parameters in FastAPI. So let's get straight into it. So we will have our setup as a basic app where our API will have a route that accepts a get request for forward slash items forward slash item ID. And the item ID path parameter will be a string. The code will be available on my GitHub in the link in the description. In order to add validation to our path parameter, we will import the path function from FastAPI. Then in our function, we can set the path parameter item underscore ID equal to the function path parameter. There is one required argument we need to pass into this function as a default value. The path parameter doesn't accept a default value, but they added this way for compatibility reasons. So we will just add an ellipsis indicating that we are not setting a default value. Let's take a look at some of the arguments we can pass into the path function. First up is the alias. We can use this if we want our path parameter to be named something different from the variable we will use in the function. This can be very useful if you want to have a path parameter that has a Python keyword like for. Then we have the title argument, and this is used in the docs to provide a title for the specific path parameter. And then we have a description that we can provide as well. This also is used for the docs to provide a description for the path parameter. And now we'll get into some number specific validations. First, we can use the GT, which stands for greater than, and we can make sure our number is greater than a certain value. So in this case, I'm saying GT equals zero, meaning that whatever number we pass in has to be greater than zero. We can also use GE, which stands for greater than or equal to, and this can make sure our number is greater than or equal to a certain value. So in this case, I have GE equals one, so any number we pass in has to be greater than or equal to one. We can also use LT, which stands for less than, and this will ensure that a number is less than a certain value. So in this case, I have LT is equal to 11, meaning that whatever number we pass in has to be less than 11. We can also use the LE argument, which stands for less than or equal to. And this can make sure our number is less than or equal to a certain value. So in this case, LE is equal to 10. So whatever value we pass in has to be less than or equal to 10. And the next one we can use is multiple of, which makes sure whatever number we pass in as a path parameter is a multiple of this number. So in this case, I'm saying multiple of three, meaning only three, six, nine, and so on can be passed in. And now we'll get into some string specific validations. So first we can use the min underscore length argument, and this will be making sure a string we pass in has a minimum character length of this number. Next, we can use max underscore length, and this will make sure strings are not longer than a certain character length that we specify. So with both min length and max length here, Whatever string we pass in as a path parameter has to be between 1 and 10 characters. We can also use the pattern argument, and this will make sure that whatever string is passed to this path parameter is matched to a regex expression we provide. So in this case, this particular regex expression is matching only alpha characters, which will be A to Z all lowercase and A to Z all uppercase with at least one character. We can also use the regex argument, which does the exact same thing as the pattern argument. Next up, we'll look at some options we can pass into the path parameter. We can specify if this path parameter should have strict validations by saying strict is equal to true. We can also add examples to this path parameter. So whenever we view it on Redoc, we can see the different examples provided. We can also mark this path parameter as deprecated, meaning it could not be optimal as there is something better they can use, or it may be removed in the future. And there are a few others that we won't cover in this video. Now let's put some of these validations to use. We can take another look at our items route that we're using at the item ID as a string. So let's add some string specific validations. We will add a title and a maximum length of five characters to our item ID. This means we will only accept a range of one to five characters as valid path parameters. This is getting a little cluttered in our function. So let's take this path parameter out and put it into a variable. And we'll assign it to a variable called item underscore ID underscore validation, or whatever you want to call it. And we will use this variable in our function. That looks much better. So let's check this out in the docs. So here we've got the code in VS Code. And we'll go ahead and start the server with uvicorn app colon app dash dash reload. So we've got that started. Let's go ahead and open up to the docs. All right, and we have our docs open and we can see our endpoint right here. We'll go ahead and open this and we'll hit try it out. 
And we can see that some of the validations we required in our path are going to be listed here on the side. So we'll go ahead and enter a string in here. We'll say ABC, execute, and we can see it returns the item ID of ABC. But if we come over here and let's type in DEF, execute again, and it gives us an error since it did not meet our requirements. So that's cool. We'll go ahead and check this out on Redoc. So we'll come up to the endpoint and just go to the Redoc endpoint. And we have our Redox endpoint, and we can see that the item ID is a required parameter as a string. And then we have the title that we gave it in the code, the string ID of the item. And it has the requirements less than or equal to five characters. So cool. So back in our code, we'll go ahead and add this examples equals a list of strings. We'll have ABC and DEF. Go ahead and save the server, have it refresh. And then we'll head back up into our browser and go ahead and refresh the page. And we can see there are some examples here of whatever we provided in the code. Now we're going to head back into the code and we're adding a forward slash amount to our endpoint. Getting this path parameter as an integer and we assign it to item amount validation, which we are creating another path variable for. And we are returning that also as part of our return statement. So inside this item amount validation path, we have to pass the default argument of just an ellipsis. And then we will go ahead and add a title as the number of items to get. And then we will say GE is equal to one. So this path parameter has to be greater than or equal to one. And we will say LE is equal to 99. So the amount of items that we will allow users to get will be anywhere between one and 99. So when we have this here, we'll go ahead and save it and go back up into the browser. Then we go ahead and refresh the page on Redoc. We can see now there is another required field here with amount as an integer. And then the title we gave it of the number of items to get one to 99. So if we head back over to our docs endpoint, we can see our endpoint has been updated. We'll go and open this up, try it out. And now we see the other validations we have here for our integer. So we'll go ahead and say ABC, an item amount of five, execute. And we can see it returned successfully. But if we come over here and give it an amount of, let's say, negative one, execute, and it gives us an error. Also, we pass in 100, execute again, gives us another error. And so that's basically a wrap on path parameters and numeric validations in FastAPI. By mastering these concepts, you're well on your way to building more robust, efficient, and secure APIs. Remember that good validation is the cornerstone of reliable software. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.